Hey guys, so um, today we have an infuriating story about a small business that ended up basically behaving like what we expect bis big businesses to behave like. And it sucks, it sucks that you know you can go and support a small business and they'll still end up treating their employees like trash. So um, subscribe, hit the bell icon for engagement, let's get into it. We have a story of the company called Kite Baby and they make uh, bamboo sleeping stuff for babies like the little things you put them in or just like pajamas basically bamboo is supposed to be a lot more sensitive to skin that kind of is more sensitive i don't know i don't have a baby but i've had some bamboo things and they're lovely so this is probably like the best one it's soft but it's durable it lasts a long time blah 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 it's quite expensive though but it's a small business and they have about 160,000 followers on tiktok and that's i'm assuming how they kind of blew up and this story is between Kite Baby essentially and the CEO of Kite Baby and Marissa Hughes who was kind of like a producer for Kite Baby they, she would essentially kind of set up the photo shoots and just be the person that invites the models you know does the whole thing basically just someone that produces content for Kite Baby so I've never been a producer for stuff I, I you know I understand this person has to be kind of on site however I'm sure there are some situations in which this person could work remotely now that links to the rest of the story but I don't know so if you go on the website for Kite Baby they have their founding story on the website and it basically goes over this like family business they're pro parents they're pro mothers they're pro babies <laughs> The whole thing, our founding story, it started with a baby who couldn't sleep. That baby was my youngest daughter and she was suffering from like skin issues. At night she would pull open her pajamas to cool down and alleviate her hot stinging skin. I followed her lead and started researching breathable fabrics and that research led me to bamboo which is a natural um, fiber which is kind of important. Um, I feel like a lot of things these days are made of polyester which it's not breathable, it's essentially plastic. Um, and so if you can, you should go for natural fibers. Obviously, if you don't have skin issues, cotton is great, it breathes. Wool's great, cashmere is obviously great, silk's great. Silk and satin are not the same. Satin is polyester, once again, it is not breathable. Silk, breathable, that's why silk is very expensive, but when you have it, it's incredible. And bamboo is also obviously amazing. We became obsessed with bamboo. Not only is bamboo buttery soft, it's hypoallergenic and three degrees cooler than cotton, which is well, I was just saying, cotton obviously breathable, but bamboo seems to be even cooler than um, cotton, making it safe and comfortable for sensitive skin. As soon as we started dressing her in bamboo, my daughter stopped waking up in the night to pull open her little PJs. It kept her cool, um, her eczema calm, and me collected. And we made it a family affair. This is where it starts. Originally hailing from China, I pitched the idea of Kite Baby to my industrious aunt Ling, who had worked her way up from a sewing girl to the owner of a garment factory in a small town of southern China. But due to rising labor costs, she struggled to keep her workers during off season, workers who were like her second family. So clearly, your aunt values her employees and doesn't want to fire them for no reason because she cares about them. I wonder why that wasn't passed down in the family business. She said to me, babies are born year round, right? Why, yes they are. We realized Kite Baby could make more than just sleep bags sustainable. We could make her factory sustainable, leveraging off season to keep her workers employed year round. And so Kite Baby was born and that value and sustainability became the foundation of our business. She said, we're parents too. Kite Baby may have started as one mama on a mission, but today we couldn't do what we do without our team. A diverse group of parents and sustainability advocates hailing from around the globe, from our headquarters in the US our manufacturing facility in China, even Canada and the UK. Uh, we care about people and the planet. We made Kite Baby for you and we happen to care about the planet too. We've vertically integrated our business to entrust production, environmental and ethical standards are consistently met. And we work exclusively with bamboo because it's a sustainable resource. But now, all of this sounds amazing. This is why people are supporting this small business. We love supporting a small business, blah, 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 blah. Now, Marissa Hughes, like I said, was an employee for Kite Baby. Now, trigger warning, if you're struggling to conceive or there are issues around conceiving, conceiving this video might not be for you so i'll see you guys in another one she had suffered multiple miscarriages as far as i'm concerned and was struggling to conceive a baby which was their greatest wish her and her husband and i think eventually they just decided that adoption might be the best way for them considering them struggling with kind of conceiving naturally and they end up getting a last minute call that there was a baby in a hospital right now it was born very early uh, about 22 weeks which i mean i've I think it's even shocking. That's a miracle, essentially, right? If we believe in miracles, that's a miracle. So they said, yes, we'll like, we'll take this baby, um, but they're gonna have to take care of it, obviously, while it stays in hospital until it's safe for the baby to be able to go home. And she asked for some remote working. She even asked for like time off. She was like, can I just work remotely from the hospital? Cause that's where I'll be 
most of the time and I can just set up all the photo shoots from the hospital on my laptop. Everyone's got a laptop these days and like that's why I was trying to set the image at the beginning. I, I just didn't think that it was a job that was completely undoable remotely. You set up some photo shoots, you invite some models and you tell them hey this and this person will take care of you once you get to the photo shoot and it can be a PA, it can be... I, I've just I've seen these things before and it just doesn't seem like one person is like the only thing keeping the business a, a, alive. You know what I mean? Like uh, surely there's like a PA that they can have that can just meet the people once they're on site but but she will just book everything remotely now um allegedly she was not offered that and she was essentially told like you either come into work or you're fired it's essentially the the the, the breakdown it's the tldr of what happened and this is all from the ceo and um yeah she basically was told that because she wasn't pregnant herself and she didn't give birth herself you know she's an adoptive parent she doesn't have the same rights as a parent who went through pregnancy and gave birth and if this was her baby as according to the CEO because I think this is her baby now right but her baby then different rules would apply but because she didn't give birth to this baby um fuck you I guess I don't know that that was the vibe essentially that I got and she didn't come out on the internet Marissa and say it herself her sister actually did a live stream and was showing all the evidence and it was that's like true sisterhood her sister was like you might believe in peace love and respect I don't I believe in violence and <laughs> I will speak out and that's I, I think you need that like back and forth you need the two sides of the coin you know I, you can tell that they probably get along really well because I feel like opposites attract in that sense um so anyway that comes out and everyone starts you know there are a lot of like mummy bloggers working with kite baby there are a lot of mummy bloggers working with them which I mean in itself is a whole different issue depending if they show their baby or not but a lot of them start you know distancing themselves from kite baby then it actually came out um which a lot of these mummy bloggers are also talking about um that other bamboo pajama companies so donating to Marissa's GoFundMe because she had a GoFundMe set up because obviously everything is so expensive when it comes to like hospital bills in the US so she set up a GoFundMe and I think Kate Quinn was the first one to donate and they donated $2,000 in their name Kate Quinn which is um Kate Quinn shop they have 22,000 followers as of me kind of screenshotting this um and so they're pretty much a direct competitor of Kite Baby and then after that like a bunch of people started donating I went on the top d top donators on GoFundMe and it was Carrie Locker, uh, Luna Aziz, Kate Quinn, Bobby Baby, Gigi and Max, Loved Baby LLC, Angel Deer, Milk Snob, Melanie Disbrow, Eric Vaughn, Bubble Baby, Virginia Jeta Jetta, Holly Hippos LLC, Snuggle and Slumber LLC. There's one anonymous one for $1,000, which I think is kind of, you know, cool. But a lot of these are like LLCs and a lot of these are direct competitors to Kite Baby. I keep on forgetting this name of this brand. It just doesn't roll off the tongue the way I kind of wanted to. Now, to me, I'm just happy that Marissa, her husband and her baby have this money now that kind of alleviates the stress of having a baby that is a preemie in hospital but also losing your job essentially. I think this alleviates some of that pressure because financial pressure is tough, you know, you can't just like find money running around the streets. Um, so that definitely takes off at least a little bit of that stress and anxiety, obviously. She is going to have to have a job after this obviously but um this isn't a bad look on her at all it's a bad look on the company and i think she'll easily be able to find a job after this hopefully if she so wants one but at the same time i am wondering like are these companies just using that to be like don't buy from kite baby buy from us we donated money but at the end of the day i don't really care because they gave money uh, but a lot of people are saying like is this just like a way to virtue signal towards your company i don't care because They've raised thousands now, you know, there's a 5,000 donation, 5,000, 2,000, 1.5, 1.2, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, like that is money that's going to help this family go a long way and whatever the intentions, the money was paid. That's all I can say at this point. Now there are some mummy bloggers talking about this. There is one called Corinne Adele and she put an unpopular opinion on kite baby drama um, and the comments are saying I'd also love to know all these other companies maternity leave policies lol because it's probably the same as kites and that was the issue with kites maternity policy leave uh, it's because Marissa hadn't worked there for long enough to qualify and then she also didn't give birth to the baby so it was like a double whammy where they were like no essentially coming in two weeks but people are now asking like all these companies donating and being like oh shop with us not kite baby what are their policies like would they have treated marissa any differently we'll never know uh why wouldn't they advertise their company as an alternative to kite baby especially in response to comments saying but no one has onesies at kite baby or anyone has a kite baby dupe um someone said it comes down to nico family and profiting off of their situation so that's the kind of you know rundown she said i get it but the family created a gofundme that's why these companies are donating and when people ask where else can we shop outside of kite they're obviously going to let them know but someone said it's still gross um that there are small 
bamboo companies being like, yes, kite baby socks, but we're better. I don't know why I did that. We're better. It's so quirky. Yeah, I do think there is that like, like pick a better time to promote yourself. But also I'm glad you donated because the family obviously needs it. They have reached their target of 50,000 and then surpassed it by quite a bit, which is amazing. And they do go over their story in the GoFundMe about how, you know, they've tried for a baby for three years now. They've gone extensive testing, attended hundreds of doctor's appointments, taken hundreds of pills, administered at home injections, could be a multiple failed IUIs, gone through IVF, experienced major complications, almost lost her life during surgery, been pregnant three times and have lost all three of our beautiful babies. And that being said, the cost of adoption is very high. We are prayerfully hoping to fundraise 50,000 to help with some of the expenses we will need to cover. So obviously adoption costs, and then this baby ended up in a NICU. So, you know, there's a lot of money going out now, uh, but this is all going towards agency fees, legal fees, court fees, birth mother living expenses, birth mother medical expenses, and birth mother counseling expenses. It will not cover our own adoption consultant and at home study fees, travel expenses, at birth, adoptive family binder and paperwork or finalization and legal expenses. As these are all things that we feel the Lord's telling us to cover on our own. And she just wants people to donate, pray, and share a link to our story. So sounds simple enough and absolutely. This was 4th of January. They received a call from the adoption center that changed our lives forever. They confirmed that the home study was approved and we were also presented with a case of a baby boy nine hours away in need of placement. So not only did they have to drive or like, well travel nine hours away, then she was basically told like, oh, in two weeks time, you have to leave this hospital and come back nine hours this way and work. And like what the husband's just gonna be in there on his own, which I, I know he's fully capable of doing that, but it's just heartless, right? To expect that to happen. Our sweet boy was born at 22 weeks and barely over a pound. We made the nine hour drive to be with him today and have a list of urgent prayer requests. We'd be so blessed if you'd be willing to commit to consistent prayer for us about the following circumstances. He's now 27 weeks plus six days. And as he was, he can be given the circumstances. However, he's still so, so fragile and there are various health concerns. So that is obviously why she can't leave the hospital, obviously. Nico's stays are expensive and he will likely be discharged around end of March, close to his original due date. And that's essentially the situation. Now you might think like, what was the response from Kite Baby? Here's the response. Hey guys, it's Ying. I wanted to hop on here to sincerely apologize to Marissa for how her parental leave was communicated and handled in the midst of her incredible journey of adoption and starting a family. I have been trying to reach out to her to apologize directly as well. Kai Baby prides itself in being a family-oriented company. We treat biological and non-biological parents equally. Through both my personal and professional experiences, I have the utmost respect for babies, families, and the adoption community. However, such respect and good intentions were not fully communicated to Marissa in the discussion of her parental leave. It was my oversight that she didn't feel supported as we always have intended. As offered to her originally, we would find her a position whenever she decides to return to work. I also want to apologize to our kite community. I want to assure you that as the company's owner, I will always stand behind our values. I will be reviewing our HR policy and procedures to make sure to avoid hurting our staff and our community in the future. Finally, we're truly happy for her adoption and wish the best to her and her family. Thank you for your time and for listening. You can tell it's scripted and everyone can tell it's scripted and it's also not great, you know? So I said, okay, cool, but let's go support Kate Quinn who donated 2000 to his wonderful mum. I love the sincerity of an apology that's being read from a piece of paper. Anyways, um, Kate Quinn and Little Sleepies are great. That backlash hitting Kite's pocketbook created this apology. Non-biological parents, seriously as an adoptive mum that her too late Kite, you're already canceled. I'm sure Kate Quinn will hire her. Ying, the bottom line is, this probably won't break your company, but it broke your OGs. After the dust settles, you'll have customers, but they, oh, I didn't expand the rest of that comment, but I kind of get what she's trying to say. Like, you know, you might still have the odd customers here and there that don't know about this whole thing, but the people that were there from the beginning who recommend you to all their friends, buy it for all their new babies. And you know, those people are going to be like, I mean, we supported you because you're a small business and we thought you'd treat someone better than that. Someone said I just placed a $313 um, order from Kate Quinn. That's her baby, Little Sleepies Forever. It's her baby. Cause she comes on kind of trying to like, like distance her from that baby like that is her baby now i don't care if she birthed it or didn't birth it that's her baby now she that's her she's the mum now you know what i mean like what do you it's just such a weird like trying to distance them to make yourself feel better about the situation the panic is real because you know you're done and then she posted a panic she was huffing and puffing at the beginning of this tiktok a second one where she's like yeah that was scripted let me try and explain again okay i'm gonna do this so i just posted a official apology on tiktok 
and the comments were right. It was scripted. I memorized it. I, I just basically just read it. It wasn't sincere. And I've decided to go off script and just tell you exactly what happened. I've been thinking about what went wrong. And I think sincerely what went wrong was how we treated Marissa. And I was the one that made the decision to veto her request to go remote um, while she has to stay in the queue to take care of her adopted uh, baby. And when I think back, this was a terrible decision. I was insensitive, selfish, and was only focused on the fact that her job was um, had always been done on site and I did not see the possibility of doing it remotely. However, having a little bit of sensitivity, understanding and flexibility would have accommodated her, but I did not accommodate her. her. So it, I cannot imagine who, the stress she had to go through, not having the option to go back to work and having to deal with a newborn in, um, in NICU. So thinking back, it really was a terrible mistake. I own 100% of that. I know people are gonna say, well, now that it's backslashed and, and you're just saving, you know, phase or saving the company. I think all of it is true, but at, at the end of the day, as human beings, as a mom, as a, a female, um, owner of the business and especially a baby business, I feel like I need to set the straight, the record straight, that I fully realize the um, impact of my action, my decision, my short-sightedness, um, that I did not accommodate Marissa fully and did not even reach out to her personally, didn't even talk to her at all um, about what happened to her uh, until today. And I really wanna to apologize to her and to the community and I would really want to take this opportunity to say that I'm sorry and I would, you know, rethink about the whole thing and review our company's HR policy uh, and procedures. I would like to make absolutely possible changes. And in fact, I think a lot of comments are right. We need to set the example because we are in the baby business. I want to be... Um, above and beyond in protecting women and giving them the right um, protection and benefits when they're having babies. So give me some time, I'm gonna go through the, the policies and, and you know HR um, stuff and just come up with a, a better policy for all our employees. And as for Marissa, she's a fantastic woman. She has the biggest heart. And I've said multiple times to multiple people, including her family, that I love her as a, a worker. I enjoy working with her every day. She's one of the few people that I actually see every day on site. Um, I just really want to apologize to her, to her again that for the feelings and the hurt and, and the damages that I have done. And um, we will continue to pay you the, um, the benefits as well as the... Um, remote position that you have requested. I understand if you don't want to come back to work um, anymore, but we will continue to pay you as if you were uh, working remotely for us for those hours that you proposed um, until you're ready to come back. And your position, your original position is always open for you when you come back. And it was just as bad. Someone said, I was literally about to purchase Kite Baby for my two month old and will not be anymore. The panic of going out of business. She's my favorite worker. I love seeing her. Also the owner, if you don't come back today, you will not have a job. Uh, Miss girl, you're done. This video is done on pure panic mode. Pregnant with my first baby and just finished my registries. Took all Kite Baby stuff off my registries. It's a sheer panic in her voice for me, lol. Buy Kite a Baby. As a baby business, why give only two week time off to a mother? That is what I'm wondering. You're a baby business and you wouldn't be able to do it without the mothers and you're a mother yourself, but you think two weeks? Two weeks is, is enough? Okay. Okay. You can hear the panic in her voice. Influences are out, supporting employees is in. Kate Quinn for the win. That kind of rhymed kind of hit that. And that is basically the situation. I think it's overall super duper duper gross and we can't trust companies. I don't know what we'll do from now on. I think we should just start learning how to sew and just making everything at home. Cause at this point it's like, you can't trust the big businesses. You can't trust the small businesses. Who can we trust?
ourselves, I guess. Um, let me know what you guys think. Subscribe, hit the bell, like, for engagement, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.